you, you, know. you, you, you peoples. You peoples. <laughs> when I try to, it doesn't matter. Look, um, you, you, you have a serious job, serious situation. And when I say, you know, because you have to deal, well, tell folks what, what you have to deal with. What, what, what do you deal with? Uh, I'm talking about the, I guess I'm talking about the informal, well, the formal, whoever the, the sellers or whatever it is. Um, what, so what, what, I what, should what, be looking at you. No, no, yeah, you can look at me. That's I cool. I should be looking at you. Yeah, no worry about it. <laughs> this, man, uh, no, you can't direct this thing. Just be natural. Okay. 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 No way. This, you know what? You, so I won't say control, but you, you have to administer. I guess you would say. What, you, what do you, what do you think of yourself as an administrator, as a, you know, a, a person that's helping? Or what, what, how would you describe what you do? Well, I would say I represent uh, a group of people who are trying to do things for themselves. Um, I, you could call it uh, a self-reliance kind of people. Mm -hmm. People who rely on their own abilities to create the kinds of uh, economies mm -hmm. that they want, mm -hmm. in, rather than having to be given a handout. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the kind of background that I think I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. Let me give you, let me tell you something. You know, I, I travel a bit, well, I travel a lot, and I, I read a lot, right? And I read this book one time, Shantaram. It's about uh, India. This guy, this guy, I guess he was from New Zealand, he got thrown, or he's from Australia, got thrown in some sort of jail, then he got out, escaped, he went to India, and he had a little bit of medical training. And what I learned from that book is kind of interesting because, like, say, for instance, when they're going to uh, build a big building in India, right? So they have the workers there that's on that, on that site, and they sort of get housing on that site. Then around that comes a, a sort of, I guess you would call it, informal kind of... Uh, kind of support system for those workers where people are feeding them and stuff like that. Then you have another circle around those people of like, you know, people that's hustling and stuff like that. But the important thing is that in those informal things, all of a sudden there's almost like a, a person that's the mayor. It wasn't elected, he just becomes the mayor, you know. It's like a, a governance just pops up like that, you know. Would you think it's the same situation? How does, how does the situation work? I guess we should say we're in Cape Town and, and, and like that, but... Uh, do you see that, or, or is that your kind of situation? How did this happen? You know? Okay, it's, it's, it's similar, but um, I see what I'm doing more uh, uh, of something coming out of uh, a kind of uh, an exclusion. Uh, you know, immigrants all over the world, mm -hmm. Uh, always find themselves in uh, situations where they have been excluded or marginalized and uh, but because of their uh, because of the kind of circumstances they find themselves in mm -hmm. they are able to almost naturally come up with ways of uh, mitigating those uh, circumstances. Mm -hmm. So in my own situation, uh, and the kind of work I'm involved in, uh, it was almost like, okay, we having problems to getting absorbed into the mainstream uh, banking system due to different factors, mm. uh, having to uh, have a proper documentation for opening bank accounts, having to uh, look, you know, uh, in a particular way when you enter into the banking hall that are fancy, mm. and also uh, many of our uh, members who also uh, have been kicked out of the mainstream financial uh, banking systems. So 
it came almost naturally that we have to come together and create our own uh, uh, financial uh, framework that can that can uh, serve the purpose and help us to meet our individual goals. Mm -hmm. So, do, do, let me just let me try to find a, a silver lining in this. Uh, well, this silver lining that, that you organize it that you organize it. First, you said members. That's interesting. I don't know. I'm going to leave that alone for a second. But is there, you know, if you find yourself in a situation where you have nothing, right? You have to create something. So, and then you have other people that look, you're in the same situation. So they automatically create something new, something or something that the, 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 the place where they're at didn't see before. Then when that happens, of course, play the ads, then they say, hey, that's a good idea. And then try to, and they have the infrastructure, they have the, the banking and whatever have you to take it to another level. So in a, in a certain sense, I guess you, I don't want to call people immigrants. The, the people that come in this situation, they have to create. They have to uh, have to do. Have you seen? I mean, what what, what kind of things have has, have have you seen happen? That was, that's a miracle. That's interesting. Just give us some examples. Well. Um a little bit, I'm, I'm trying to understand the question very well. Mm -hmm. um, we are in the informal environment mm -hmm. and we are always in a situation where we continue to push to get whatever we need to survive. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, creativity is almost uh, compulsory. Otherwise, um, you may not get anything. So let me give a, a better illustration. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, people who are sellers of fresh uh, fruits and vegetables. Okay. And on a daily basis, they would have to wake up 4 a.m. in the morning to go to the central location where they buy their uh, fruits and vegetables in, in, in bulk. Mm -hmm. And that means that they cannot uh, sit around and be looking at those fresh produce. Mm -hmm. It has to be sold. Mm -hmm. So in the face of various challenges like uh, law enforcement and uh, government officials, dictating uh, you know various kinds of laws these people must sell those uh, uh, produce you know uh, promptly mm -hmm. so that automatically will require that they are resolute and creative and uh, so creativity comes naturally Mm -hmm. when you f find yourself in such a very tight corner. Mm -hmm. And also knowing that uh, we are in a very unequal uh, society where the, 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 the very few members of the society uh, controls the most of the wealth that comes in, in mm -hmm. you know, that, that the country generates. So uh, being conscious of that, uh, it's, 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 um, it, it helps you to know that you are not doing anything wrong, that the situation you found yourself in the first place have been created. Mm -hmm. It's very unnatural. Mm -hmm. have been created by the system, the capitalist, imperial, imperialistic uh, system that mm -hmm. we uh, find ourselves in. So, but uh, to survive, we don't feel ashamed to do what we have to do mm -hmm. to, to survive. Well, that's an interesting yeah. word, ashamed. Uh, is there some sort, uh, let, me put it, let me put it another way. Um, do you find new people that come in, you have to do 
for like a bit, so a, a, a psychological, an adjustment, but adjust them psychologically to this new situation if they come. But do you find that you have to deal with that also? What, what, what kind of things do you have to deal with? with a mentality of somebody's coming new and they, you know, how do you deal with a new person? No, we, we, we don't have, um, uh, we don't have a major problem with that. Oh, okay. Although we do have, okay, again, we are mostly immigrants mm -hmm. who we're talking about here, mm -hmm. who are trying to earn a living in the informal sector mm -hmm. right here in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and some of the problems the immigrants have to deal with is lack of documentation. Mm. Meaning that the government authorities who are supposed to hand them a form of document to regularize their stay in the country often drag their feet or uh, calculatively refuses to uh, extend that privilege mm. to the members in this, uh, uh, the, 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 the immigrants. So, but what we uh, try to, what we try from time to time to let our, our members to be aware of, or anyone in, who finds themselves, themselves in that situation is that, um, is that as a human being, we have a kind of human rights to be anywhere at any time, you know? Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, that, that's one. And also, uh, before the, the colonial idea of having boundaries in most part of the world, especially uh, in Africa, Mm -hmm. when those boundaries were imposed, before the boundaries were imposed, there has been uh, a great uh, 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 kind of migration drift, a number of migration drifts happening and from time to time. Just, just like the animals of the Serengeti. So people move, it's, it's, it's a human right. If you are not comfortable in an area is almost a natural is that's actually that's animals do it so mm -hmm. even us human beings mm -hmm. who are supposed to be higher in intellect mm -hmm. than animals uh, should naturally be able to express that um, uh, aspiration mm -hmm. or even out of survival mm -hmm. to be able to shift to wherever you think you can find yourself comfortable. And there could be a number of reasons why people would have to move. Uh, uh, it could be as a result of uh, uh, environmental issues, economic issues, uh, and so on and so forth. So, where, so we try to let people know that this is, this is your situation. This is actually the truth about what is happening. And these borders are artificial and um, are not very relevant to you. So that uh, gives them a kind of uh, uh, comfort. Uh, so um, psychologically, yeah. I belong here. Yes. This is this is Southern Africa, or this is Africa. And like Mangalisa Robert Subuke says, hey, look, all you have to do is be humane on this thing. But, and you're trying to, I guess you're trying to make force authorities to be humane but <laughs> maybe i just my but but yeah you know for instance like um if if you've been following the news you will realize that uh um in a number of zimbabwe i'm not sure exactly the mm -hmm. numbers two hundred and fifty thousand are uh, being asked to leave mm -hmm. south africa on or before the 31st of December this year, 2022. 
And I right come in, in the middle of tourist season. <laughs> I'm just asking. I don't know. <laughs> and I come in contact with Zimbabweans, you know, each day. And you know, all I can tell them is that what well, I don't think anything is going to happen to you because what you are being subjected to is unnatural because you are part and parcel of this region uh, of, of of South Africa. You know? Yeah, but the 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 argument or some. There must be an argument in some way that's going to say, "Well, look, you 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 couldn't handle business in your country. You you let the political whatever or the whatever, whoever do whatever. It's just like not like well, maybe you did not like you had a drought and you had to come out. Of it. I mean, you know, you had you there's human beings that kicked you out or put in a situation to kick you out. What do you say to that? I mean, what do they say? Well, um, we know some people may not know, but we do know that. Uh, the Zimbabwean economic crisis is one of those that was uh, imposed on the country through mm. sanctions. Mm. Uh, when Zimbabwe, uh, after the disappointment of with, with the British government relating to uh, land uh, reform. Oh, you said it very nicely. Disappointment. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I'm gonna let you get away with that. I mean, you know, but <laughs> so 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 the 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 the, the, the sanctions now started to be uh, imposed on Zimbabwe. Uh, otherwise, Zimbabwe is a beautiful country. It's a very rich country. Still a very rich country, but because we we are in a globalized. Uh, mm. Uh, world, mm. you know, you cannot uh, be on your own, even if you want to be too. So, uh, and Zimbabwe has a right to trade with its neighbors, mm. or even to trade with any country, mm. uh, anywhere in in the world. Mm. But that uh, that opportunity has been strangled repeatedly through various sanctions imposed by the United States and their friends, their, their, their allies. Mm -hmm. so, um, so the Zimbabwe problem is uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of artificial, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I sympathize with ordinary Zimbabweans and whatever um, uh, hard uh, uh, policy that the South African government is trying to impose on Zimbabwean citizens to go back to Zimbabwe, I, I, I do not think it's fair. And I think that uh, there, sh there will be an intervention. Already we have many, a few uh, uh, legal uh, uh, cases that are in process and I believe that it eventually would uh, make the South African government to reverse that uh, idea of sending 250,000 uh, skilled and semi-skilled people back to Zimbabwe. Yeah. Well, I want to get off that for just for a bit here. Uh, part of well, let me put it this way: we um, we we've had the the pandemic, whatever they're calling it, you know, for the last couple of years, and so uh, tourism, which I guess you rely a lot on, is going down. But it seems like this year the tourists are saying, "Hey, we're tired of this. They're going to come back." So it's going to be a huge flood. I mean, because you know, well, Cape Town's the number one tourist destination in the world. In South Africa, South Africa, you know, as they say, Cape Town is not South Africa, and South Africa is not Africa. So people <laughs> like to come here for all of this, all that stuff. But I mean, what do you think is going to happen? There's going to be this huge, you know, demand for services. Um, uh, are the South African citizens going to say, "Well, that's our opportunity," or y'all should go? I mean, what's what's the dynamic there? Okay, I don't know. Are you? Is that uh, in relation to the Zimbabwe? Or no, 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 no. Let me say just in general. Just, no, I'm, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's uh, it's a very good thing that uh, the tourism numbers are starting to pick up again mm -hmm. for Cape Town and South Africa. 
um, it's really very good because uh, pre-COVID, we know that the tourism sector in the country has grown mm -hmm. and it was at a very comfortable level. So now that uh, the people who cancelled their trips to South Africa in 2020, mm -hmm. some of them have rebooked again to visit South Africa in 2022. Mm -hmm. The people who were supposed to be able to visit in 2021 are also have also made bookings and also the people who booked previously for 2022 and new people who wants to visit South Africa for 2022 are also coming to South Africa. That is very good. So I think that will help to revitalize the tourism sector. We have many hotels that has closed down, uh, guest houses, restaurants, that can help to stimulate that industry, which of course also filters to other industries and the economy as a whole. So it's a welcome development. Mm -hmm. well, well, let's let's go to Abby. What, what do you do? <laughs> I mean, I, I hear, but I mean, when I say what do you do, how did you get in this position where you had to be the organizer? I guess that's what I'm asking. You know, what's what skills do you have that you they say, hey, that guy seems like. You, let me, I'm sorry, let, let me just go off and say, um, I lived on Lower East Side, well, I lived in New York, but Lower East Side, and I was walking with a musician one time, and they had these like little, Lower East Side, they had these little gardens where people just, they, just, they have maybe jam sessions, you know, they're growing vegetables or whatever have you. So I was walking with this um, musician, you know, um, uh, and he was just, he said, oh, let me go in here, because he always carries his horn, you know, to go in there. So he started playing with the people, you know. And then, then all of a sudden, I said, no, 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 let him do it, because, because he knows what, you, you see, they, they could, they understood, you know? So was it like that? I mean, how did you get in this position to be, a, I don't want to say leader, but, you know, be an organ to do something about the situation? Well, um, when were the, was there somebody before you? Well, I have been motivated by a lot of people in my life. Um, I, okay, I, I think, I don't know, do you have opportunity to edit? <laughs> we don't edit. This is raw. Don't worry about it. I mean, you know, you people with, with the makeup and the hair and the, and the, this is not SABC. This is not NBC. This is the people's, this is the, we're informal, the informal whatever it is we are. Don't worry about it. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. Go ahead. Well, um, I'm a person who, uh, is inspired by uh, wanting to make the world a better place, but uh, I look closer to my, you know, my environment, my my immediate environment, mm -hmm. and I draw inspiration always from that. I I want uh, a situation where by each and every person can have whatever they need to to, to survive mm. you know, on a daily basis. So that's where I draw my inspiration. And, um, and, and because of that, I that informed the kind of skills that I have to acquire to be able to uh, to be able to, to to make that happen and also working with other people. As well, identifying people who could also uh, uh, be of assistance and bringing people together. So all these people, these people are talking about the different strata of what society, government, or what a business, what what, what kinds? Of... Yeah, uh, from time to time, we um, I'm able to connect with people in in in, in policy, but mostly working with people in the in the non-government organization mm -hmm. because you have easy access to these people there's less bureaucracy and through them we can do these things for ourselves in the, in the grassroots mm -hmm. um you talk a little bit i don't want to keep you a long time because you're a busy man you know <laughs> um but you say 
a lot of times you use the word, well, people use the word survival. Let's talk about the prosperity. What happens at, what's the next level above survival, or the next, next, next level above survival? What, what do you see for this? What kind of prosperity, what kind of, you know, beyond survival do you see, your vision of, of this? Okay. Um, um, of course, uh, survival is very important because uh, if you do not survive, then you cannot even talk about growth. Uh, my vision is to see a world where um, everyone have enough to eat, a place to, to live, a safe place to live, and have freedom of movement, freedom of thinking, freedom of thought, and uh, being able to be in harmony with neighbors. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's what I, um, that, that, that's the kind of world I envision. But I know that because of the imposition of the capitalist system, uh, that has been very, very difficult to attain. But it's 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 a life, uh, it's a long life uh, um, uh, a battle. It's a long life uh, journey. Uh, I do not believe in the assertion that um, that uh, certain people, irrespective of race, are the custod custodian of knowledge or anything. I, I believe uh, in what one of my mentor, Dr. John Henry Clark. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, Robert, hey, yo, I, that, I, I was a teenager he taught us. I mean, I, no, I'm sorry. You that. know, he said all knowledge belong to, all, all knowledge in the world belong to all the people of the world. Sure. So that, that, that is my belief. Uh, that is also why if I have any knowledge, I'm, I'm very quick to release it to, uh, to the world, to anyone. And also believe that um, I can draw uh, knowledge and inspiration from all the people of the world, mm -hmm. any color, any race, mm -hmm. any from wherever uh, they come from. So um, I know that with that kind of um, uh, 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 frame of mind, uh, the world can really be a, a better place for mm -hmm. everyone. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go, but let me ask you this. Uh, obviously, you, you can't do this forever. <laughs> well, when you put you put something in place, or I'm gonna say you you've honed something that that people respect and seem to be very good. How is it gonna sustain yourself if uh, when you uh, move on? Uh, is there a, a mentoring system? Is there a, a people that you see on the horizon? That people already picked with what's. What, Yes, we do have in the organization uh, people that we are working with. In with Kalisawa, we have a board of directors. What was the, a, a board? In the, what's the Kalisawa? Uh, Kalisawa is the name of the cooperative. Uh, okay, well, how do you spell it? Um, Kalisawa. A Kalisawa. K A L E S A N W A. Mm -hmm. uh, it in in the Yoruba. Uh, uh, language it means to prosper okay so this is nigeria a nigerian word it's, it's a nigerian word okay. it's a yoruba word okay. uh, yoruba people of yoruba. west africa okay. sorry okay. I, I, yoruba person. people of west okay. africa <laughs> i didn't mean nigerian like that but yes. yoruba, I no, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yoruba people of west africa uh it means prosper so we have uh a board and we a, a, a board of uh, directors and we also have members who volunteer from time to time. Mm -hmm. And from those people already, we have people who uh, mm -hmm. might be able to do what I'm doing whenever I feel like uh, I, I want to uh, step aside. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that. so we, we do have that here. Okay. Well, look, I'm, I'm, again, you're a busy man. 
<laughs> so I don't want to uh, keep it, but do you, do you, what would you, if you could talk, not the government, but if you could talk to people, you know, the, the people that, that might say, oh, you taking our jobs or you taking our situation or whatever it is, what would you say to not only that group of people, but just to, this is worldwide actually, what would you say to people who feel like um, something is coming that they can't control? Uh, what, would you, what would you say? Well, I think, um, I don't know actually where the narrative of people taking their job, where it always comes from. Mm. It probably uh, from politicians who are trying to whip up uh, xenophobic mm. sentiments. Mm, mm, mm. But uh, my, my advice to the group of people that feels aggrieved or feels uh, marginalized mm -hmm. by having people who are coming from other cultures or other mm -hmm. countries is that there are opportunities for synergies. There are, there are possibilities of <clears throat> intersections where the two groups can, or the various groups can work together and actually make the communities a better place. I'll give you an example. In South Africa here, we hear often of uh, people who are coming into the townships, uh, mm -hmm. taking jobs and creating mm -hmm. businesses. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, we have a group of Cameroonians or Ghanaians or Nigerians who are setting up panabiting or mechanic workshops okay. in the townships. Uh, the government of South Africa, the different regions, could, for example, pair locals in various communities to understudy or be a kind of apprentice in these various workshops for a number of years uh, in such a way that in two or three years, the, the locals could uh, absorb or learn those uh, uh, technical skills mm -hmm. from those other guys who are coming from Cameroon, Nigeria, Ghana, and so on and so forth, or Mozambique for that matter. And the way the government could intervene, they could intervene in such a way that they support both sides. The guy who has the workshop, the government could help them to put certain things in place. It could be uh, something that has to do with occupational health and safety. And on the other side, they could assist the uh, local uh, 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 young people to maybe get some stipend while they go through this training so that the, that period will not be a period that is too uh, difficult for the apprentice. And after graduating from that kind of arrangement, the local school now also set up. It, it doesn't take much for someone to fix a dented car. Mm. You don't need so much uh, 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 technical skills to do that. You, you just need to learn from someone who knows how to do that. And in, 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 in instances where the government wants um, the people to have maybe a higher level of uh, skill or artisanship, they can come in and provide those theoretical mm -hmm. uh, 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 augmentation mm -hmm. for that. And at the end of the day, those guys who are coming from other countries setting up these workshops will not be seen as a pest, but rather as mm -hmm. a re people who are coming with resources, mm -hmm. uh, human resources that can be shared with the locals. And within a period of 10 to 15 to 20 years, uh, we could have a generation of South Africans who 
can help uh, in their various communities to do motor mechanics, panel beating, and many other uh, skills at, at that level. So that, that's that's what I've always thought of. You know, that environment. It's a good thought. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Most much. appreciative. Thank you.